Welcome to Achieving the SDGs. In this talk, I wish to briefly highlight the evolution of the concept of sustainable development. Uh, and this has been taking place over almost or more than three decades. Some of the scholarly work uh, on this topic uh, points to the fact that initially, uh, the discourse on sustainable development tended to focus on norm promotion and rulemaking. So there was considerable focus on agreeing to certain arrangements, certain regulatory frameworks, and then agreeing to certain procedures to ensure that countries and agencies and different actors actually complied with these rules and arrangements. Thereafter, uh, the sustainable development discourse tended to move on to uh, focusing more attention on multi-stakeholder approaches. So the, the point here was to involve a greater number of actors and to in, uh, indulge in this um, global governance project where uh, one formulated global goals in order to get nations uh, to uh, change uh, some of their practices, but and this also applied, of course, to individual behavior. So what is particularly interesting uh, when one looks at the evolution of the sustainable development discourse is that there has been a movement from environment slash development to now where there is increased acceptance of environment and development. So there is now greater acceptance of the interdependence of the environmental, social and economic dimensions. Uh, while there are numerous uh, scholarly works on this topic, I will recommend, if you're interested, uh, one particular book uh, that I found very useful. It was published in 2017. Uh, called Governing Through Goals. It was edited by Kani and Bierman, and I will be using uh, several aspects of this book in, in, the, in the slides uh, in this talk. There are uh, very many international conferences, often uh, under the auspices of the United Nations, that has in many ways contributed to the evolution of the sustainable discourse. And one of the most important ones that really got uh, this um, discussion on sustainable development going took place in Stockholm in 1972. It was the United Nations Conference on the Human Environment. And here you will see the declaration from, from that conference, and you can read more about it on the internet. But what is particularly interesting is here there is this recognition that while human well-being is is the focus of development we cannot really do so without considering protection and improvement of the environment uh, following the 1972 conference a very important report was published in 1987 called our common future it was published by the world commission on environment and development chaired by uh, my former prime minister groholm brundtland and and uh, this commission was also often referred to as the brundtland commission and what is a very very interesting about this and i will discuss this in a separate lecture uh, uh, the 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 fact that this report actually focused on the concept of human needs that human needs actually was to be prioritized but while we try to achieve economic development and the uh, and the protection and promotion of basic human needs uh, the report from the brundtland commission also launched the idea of limitations that Given the state of technology, given uh, the kind of social organizations that we have, um, uh, these uh, must be seen in relation to the environment's ability to meet not just our current needs, but also future needs. And what is particularly well known uh, in relation to the 1987 report from the Brundtland Commission is the definition of sustainable development that continues to be popular throughout the world, uh, which is uh, related to this that you see on the screen, development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Another very important uh, event that took place in the year 2000 that um, is important in relation to understanding the uh, sustainable development uh, discourse or evolution of the discourse uh, related to the Millennium um, 
uh, summit that took place in the year 2000 and the so-called Millennium Development Goals or the MDGs were adopted. Uh, these were eight concrete goals, again, as part of this growing uh, global governance uh, that focused on global goal setting. Uh, most of these goals were, of course, uh, related to typical uh, developmental uh, issues, but there was uh, a goal uh, related to environmental sustainability, and uh, all of this uh, was going to be couched under this uh, partnership for development that was MDG 8. Following the uh, uh, Millennium Summit, another very important UN-led conference took place in the year 2002 in Johannesburg, the World Summit on Sustainable Development, and it was important for countries here to further affirm their support for the MDGs that was adopted a couple of years earlier. And here countries agreed to advance and strengthen the interdependent and mutually reinforcing pillars of sustainable development. Uh, and this was to be done at local, national, regional, and global levels. Another very important uh, outcome of the Johannesburg plan of implementation that was adopted during this meeting was to involve a um, newer set of actors. So to also promote uh, private-public partnerships uh, that uh, has now become increasingly the norm in international development. And uh, 20 years after the first Rio meeting, uh, there was yet another one, a Rio plus 20, in the year 2012, where countries uh, again uh, met, negotiated, but they did not uh, negotiate on rules, but extended the concept of uh, multi-stakeholder partnerships for governance and implementation of sustainable development uh, to even further uh, groups of actors. So here we have uh, uh, more private you know, philanthropies and foundations and private sector actors uh, being involved or being encouraged to be involved in promoting sustainable development. There were numerous voluntary commitments that were made during the summit, but what was particularly interesting is that uh, uh, this was in many ways uh, ser served as, as the um, precursor to the sustainable development goals. So there was considerable talk about what would uh, replace the Millennium Development Goals that were set to expire in 2015. So this uh, summit was important because it laid the foundations for what later uh, came to be known as the 2030 Agenda. And the final... Uh, major UN conference uh, that I wish to highlight here, of course, took place in 2015. Uh, it was actually the UN General Assembly uh, and uh, 193 world leaders agreed to something called the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. And here, what is particularly interesting is that uh, sustainable development that was, um, um, it was, it was popular, but it wasn't, um, necessarily getting the kind of attention that it deserved, it really received a boost. It, it, it was rejuvenated in many ways. It was resurrected. And uh, in this uh, document, uh, countries agreed that the future of humanity and of our planet lies in our hands. So it is uh, human responsibility. Uh, it also is in the hands of today's younger generation who will pass the torch to future generations. So there was this kind of... Um, reaffirming the idea of sustainable development that we need to address present needs without forgetting, uh, without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs, which was uh, something that was launched by the Brundtland Commission in 1987. So the crucial part of the 2030 Agenda uh, consists of five so-called P's. The first P has to do, of course, with people, that uh, uh, human needs uh, related to poverty reduction, reducing hunger in all its dimensions, these are very important and these cannot be forgotten. Uh, at the same time, the second P talks about planet, the need to protect the planet from degradation uh, and, and the fact that we have to manage our natural resources in a sustainable way. The third P uh, is focused on prosperity, that 
economic growth is required for poverty reduction, for hunger, and that uh, technological, economic, social progress must take place, but this has to be in harmony with nature. The fourth P relates to peace, that it is important for sustainable development to foster peaceful, just and inclusive societies. So particularly SDG 16 talks about this, uh, to be free, to live a life free from violence and fear. Um, and then the final P, which in many ways uh, resembles the uh, uh, MDG 8, the, the importance of international national partnership uh, based on global solidarity. Uh, but this kind of partnership should focus on the needs of the poorest and most vulnerable people and countries. But all part uh, countries should also participate. It should not just be an exclusive pr uh, a, a project that involves only a few countries. Be and this is important because that was the criticism uh, against the Millennium Development Goals, that it was um, a project that was undertaken mainly by just a few countries without there being participation of, of the whole world. And so in terms of the 2030 agenda, uh, in fact, uh, what, what really did characterize this process was widespread consultation, widespread participation of numerous actors, civil society organizations, governments, scholars, students, etc. So in many ways, it addressed that, that, that shortcoming of the N uh, MDGs by focusing on participation of all countries and actors. In uh, more recent uh, years, there's been, uh, of course, lots of concepts uh, ha that have risen, uh, lots of scholarly work, uh, new approaches, etc. One particular approach that has got considerable attention relates to uh, planetary boundaries developed uh, by the Stockholm Resilience Center in Sweden, where the idea is that um, we should really think about our, our planet, our lifestyles, um, in relation to a set of critical thresholds. So the Earth system has these uh, thresholds and human activities should not breach any of these thresholds or boundaries. And if we can somehow keep our acti activities, our planet within a so-called safe operating space, then we will be okay. Um, some of this has been controversial and uh, not all countries uh, have adopted this approach and it has also not been incorporated in the 2030 agenda but you can read more about it uh, on the website of the Stockholm Resilience Center and this is one illustration of some of the uh, thresholds and the safe safe uh, areas. So if you look at the green areas, those are the boundaries. If we can just keep our activities within that sphere, within those boundaries, uh, then we will have a better chance of promoting sustainable development.